And so, yeah, like Mike said, I'm Caitlin Friesen. I'm the children's pastor here at the church, and it's an honor to be able to speak to you guys today. It's a little bit of a different crowd than I'm used to looking at on a Sunday morning, but um, my heart is that kids would just rise up to be the strong warriors of Jesus that he's called them to be. And I have learned so much from their faith, their simple faith, their heart of love for people. And it reminds me and gives me a whole new look into Matthew 18, 2 to 4, which is our um, main verse for this, this morning, which is the main message is faith like a child. So Jesus called a little child to him and he put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I love this verse because it just shows how God created children. They just have such a simple faith. He created them with a soft heart, but the question is, is that will we equip them? So my first point is we need to foster that faith. So I've been learning um, a lot of facts and a lot of things that have really spurred my faith. And I've shared these with my team, and they really wanted the whole church to know so that we can equip the church as a team, but also as in your families as well. So many children who've attended church all their lives say that they've never heard God's voice, never felt his presence, and only three out of 10 of those kids are absolutely, absolutely committed. 70% of young people say they plan to quit and never come back to church. By the age of five, they have their foundations of their belief system completely established. By age nine, their moral anchor is in place, and by 10, there is simple refining, but not much to their spiritual views from then to adulthood. So our goal as a team is to raise them up, that they would be able to pray effectively, that they would hear the voice of God, they would be able to be led by the Spirit and pray for others and see miracles, that they would be worshipers and encounter Jesus powerfully, that they would be devoted to their faith and have a, a personal devotional time with God, that it wouldn't be just something that we are telling them. The thing is, as that I've seen, is that when we give them the supernatural, what they're hungry for, these kids, they respond. And it is amazing. Joel, Joel 2.28 says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. See, not that long ago, a little girl came to me and she said, I had, I had a dream and it was really cool. And I was like, oh, tell me about it. And she said, well, I was going through something really hard in my dream. And God handed me this sword. The thing is, though, no one else could see the sword. But when he handed it to me, I had power to overcome it. So then I got to explain to her what that was. That's the, the sword of the spirit. That is right from scripture. And it is so cool how God will give the, these kids pictures and dreams. And then you get to show them, this is scripture. This is scripture. And it is so exciting. At camp, I was speaking at camp a couple weeks ago. And we were praying that um, there was a few boys that night who had just become believers. And we were praying that they would um, have dreams, that God would give them dreams. Because I was telling them how God wants to go on adventures with them. And he loves them personally. And then the little boy woke up in the morning and said, I had a dream that me and God, we went to Disney World. And we had so much fun together. And I just know how much he loves me. And he was excited. But you know what, guys? This is how God feels about us. And so it's, it's so exciting. Um, God wants to speak to kids because they are receptive. How often do we just not listen because we're distracted? But the human brain is the most receptive in the first five years of life. The neuron that circuits that children learn with grow at a lightning speed. In just the first six months of the life, the human brain has already grown half its adult size. A baby forms 700 neural connections every second in the first 1,000 days of life. And each moment is forming one of those connections. They said every time we speak to a child, every time we deal with a child, everything that they see, it's forming one of those connections. So then our question is, what are we wiring into these children's brains? Birth to three is the fastest rate of, birth, of brain development across the entire human lifespan. So it only makes sense that we're pouring into these kids' life, not just in the natural,
but also in the spiritual in this age. Well, this is a, I have lots of stories because those are just the best ways to learn. But this two-year-old, she was at her grandpa's house and she was playing. And he had gone blind. So she was playing and then she just ran up on her, his lap. She kisses his eyes, says Jesus, and then goes back to playing. It wasn't a big deal. That's just probably what she felt she needed to do. Within a week, that grandpa could see. We underestimate what God can do. Truth, truth is established in the first three years of a child's life, along with their identity and their ability to establish boundaries and handle stress in the first three years of their life. 2 Timothy 3.15 says, From infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. When we wait to teach our kids their identity and their purpose in the kingdom, we are missing out on a huge window of opportunity. One of my favorites is John the Baptist. When Mary comes, he says in scripture that he leaps in the womb. Did you know that babies can sense spiritual things even in the womb? It doesn't start when kids become teenagers or maybe when they become adults. It actually starts right in the womb. People are, they have studies have shown that when we pray over babies in the womb, we declare truth of them over the womb, it makes a big impact for their life. It starts as babies. Ages three to five is the most sensitive age group. They are most naturally supernatural built because it's often looked at as active over imagination. But their faith is so pure and so simple. By the time kids reach um, school age, we will have to already build up their faith multiple times. They will already have their faith challenged multiple times by the time they reach school age. So, but the basis of a belief system is set in place by age five. That's of God, of himself, right and wrong. So how tragic it is to downplay their spiritual ability just saying that they're a kid. Imagine children who've been taught to hear the voice of God from babyhood and up. It would become second nature for them to be led by the spirit and live by the power of God. The thing is, kids need to have their own encounters with God. I have this chocolate bar here. Now, I could just explain to you guys what it tastes like. You guys might guess the chocolate it is. And that's the same thing I could do with the kids and the whole team. Or even as parents, we could just explain to the kids the power of God, how awesome he is, his, his love, his peace, the way that we can defeat the enemy. Or we could let the kids eat the chocolate. We can let them experience it. And it's the same thing with us. On a Sunday, we could just come to church on a Sunday. We can let the pastors tell us about God's power. Or we can dive in and we can experience it for ourselves. And that's what I really want the kids to do. Not that they would just come to church on Sunday, but this is every single day in your families, as grandparents, as aunts and uncles, as honorary people, that we can just lead people, lead these kids to encounter Jesus. Someone um, had grown up in the church all of their lives. And they were in their 20s. And they were going through a really hard time. They were really struggling. And someone said, well, you have been through, you've been in church all your life. I thought that you would be able to stand strong in this. And they said, well, all I know, all I've been taught is Bible stories. That's all I know. And that is a thing that has challenged me because Bible stories are great. And every single Sunday I teach the Bible stories because the Bible is the basis of what I teach those kids. That is the foundation. But I don't want to just teach, tell them a Bible story, and then we play a game and on our way. I want to teach them this Bible story and then go deeper. What is that Bible story teaching us? How can they live out of that? What is the key point that we're teaching so that we're not just telling them a fun story, but that we're building up strong warriors of Jesus? So three um, core values that it's every Sunday that I make sure that these are the, the foundations of our Sunday. And this is really, I have to have this in my life first. And this is the same for all of us. One is the meat of God's word. We want to have not just a fluffy one verse in our life, but we want to be in the deep of God's word. We want to meditate on it. We want to give these children the meat of God's word. They can understand 
so much, and they are hungry for it. So are we, are we giving it to them? Two is encountering God's presence. Are we leading them so, to him so that they can experience what his peace feels like, what it feels like to have a dream from God or a picture from God, to know his voice. They're going to have to make decisions. Are we teaching them to look to God for that wisdom and equipping for God's word? Uh, my vision for kids' ministry is teaching children to know the love and power of God and equipping them to walk in it. But you know what? This is such a good vision for all of our lives because are we, do we know the love and power of God? Or do we know our identity in Christ? Are we living that? And then are we walking that out? Because when we know who we are in Christ, when we know the power and love of God, that's going to change the way that we live. And we're equipping that. When our kids see that in all of us, they're going to be hungry for the same thing. Um, one, one little girl, she was going on a trip with her family, and they had to go to the airport early in the morning. I think it was like four or something in the morning. And um, so most kids, when they're driving up to the airport, to Regina, they would probably sleep that early. But she had a hunger for Jesus. So she took her Bible, and she was starting, she wanted to read and read. And then she starts this whole devotional time with her dad at four in the morning, all on her own initiative because she's hungry for it and guys if we would all have this hunger like these children have but we need to foster it into them kids can't always acknowledge the presence of God but that's our job is to teach them it to open their eyes to it to recognize oh just like that little girl had that dream okay this is where it is in scripture whenever we have those things we want to bring it to scripture scripture is our foundation how do we know if this is a dream from God well we look in scripture and so we're teaching them that we're opening their eyes to that um and it's cool because they're they're hungry and they're trying to figure things out uh, last Sunday, we were talking about drawing near to God. James 4, 8 says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And so I was saying how it's our choice. They have a choice to draw near to God and God wants them to draw near. But the enemy is going to try to keep them from drawing near. So they got to be strong in battle. They got to put on their arm of God. They got to do this. And one little boy, just so intent, he's just like, Caitlin, has that ever happened to you? And in a moment, I was like, didn't know what, what he was quite asking. And he said, Caitlin, has, it, has the enemy ever tried to keep you from God? They want to know our personal things. So then I got to explain. I got to t tell them, yes, for sure. But we are strong. We have victory. This is what it looks like. And this is how God's brought victory in my life. They want to know personal things of your life too, not just things that we can tell them, right? So another thing is when we do that, we want to make rooms for kids to experience Jesus. Um, a big thing that kids can hear from God and learn from God is through pictures. So when they're learning, I often will give them a picture. Like in the two and three age, I'll say, close your eyes and picture that you're on this beach. And this is even a good way for adults to learn too. And you want to make it as descriptive as you can. So you would say, you're on this beach and the sand is in your toes and the sun is, is making your cheek warm. And there in the distance, you see Jesus walking towards you. And what would you do? Would you run towards Jesus? What do you think Jesus would say? And now, as we learned prior, God has gifted them with imagination. So let's use their imagination for good. And then one, I did this with the kids and one said, yeah, they have, Jesus has a gift for me. And, the, and one had the, the gift that they want, Jesus wanted to give the kid, he had a little cross. Jesus was giving him a cross. And he was saying, Jesus wants me to have re forgiveness. And this is the pictures that God can give. As they're older, God gives them their own pictures. So I have, I have a few up there if they, can, if they can show them. So this is, it says, I'll be strong in the name of the Lord. Stop in the name of the Lord. So then that's them. And then on that side is is that you would see it as described as a dragon because we're going through a seeker series where the enemy is made as a dragon, but we're learning that they have power in the name of Jesus. So when that fear comes, when that anxiety comes, they can say, stop in the name of the Lord, and they have authority in Jesus' name. Uh, next picture. Oh, that one didn't show up very good. 
but it said, it's essentially Jesus running, or the kid running to Jesus, and it's saying, I praise God, I, I found you, and they're running, and how they're giving their life to Jesus. Next picture. Oh, these, the orange didn't show up. Okay, this one is a really cool story, because it's another way how God can give pictures exactly a scripture. So, they had done these pictures, we, we turned the big lights on, we have the little lights, I play instrumental music, I pray that God would speak to the kids and give them a picture, and then as, as I do, they draw, and then they will often, they're very excited, so they come and they show me, and so this little girl said, it's me and Jesus, and I have a beautiful dress on, just like your wedding dress, and this is the thing, that is scripture, because we are called the bride of Christ, and she has hearts around, and she's not... Like, I didn't teach that. God had just given her that. And I, then I got to alliterate and say, yes, that is scripture. This is, what, this is where it's from. This is what it's meaning. So then we get to equip them with that. Next picture. So God's love is so much bigger than the universe, so much bigger than what I think. And then you can see God's love for us, the planet, and just that they're learning how big it is or bigger than what they can even imagine. So this is just a few. It was hard to pick. There's, there's lots of them. So that goes on to the second point is a simple faith. These kids have such a simple faith, and I love it. Um, I don't know if many of you guys know my story, but I was for years very sick. And so I, from time to time, I will tell the kids this. And I said to them, so I was so sick. But now, I'm not. I said, I wasn't able to walk. And the kids would say, and now you can. I said, I, wa I had to be on oxygen to breathe. And now I'm not. I said, I was on IVs, but now I'm not. And I was showing them the difference of what, how I was so sick. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I was in so much pain. I was days away from death. And I said, but guys, how did this happen? And one little boy so matter of fact, fa fact said, God took you to his mechanic shop. And I said, <laughs> and I said, you know what? Really, that is exactly what he did. Just in a, right? It's just so matter of fact. And I love it. See, I'll tell you a little story about, about my life. So, when I was a kid, I was just like, that was matter of fact. If somebody said something, it had to be true. So you know when a kid gets hurt and then you, you, they go to their mom and they feel better, right? Because a kiss always makes them feel better. So someone said to, said to me like, oh, you feel better because the mommy juice, you just need mommy juice. And I thought, yeah, exactly. So in my mind, in this creative imagination, I was like, that's matter of fact, of course. Every mom has mommy juice. So this is how it worked. I was so confident of it. In fact, I would preach it to my family, like extended. Maybe my aunt and uncle even remember it. And I would say, okay, so if a mom has three kids, then every mom has three bottles inside of them. And every one, each of those bottles has the child's name on it. So my mom would have one that says Ashley James Caitlin. And when I would go to my mom, she would kiss me. Her body would know that it was... Caitlin, that mommy juice would come out and I would be better. Didn't that make sense? <laughs> but this is the thing. This is the thing. It's so matter of fact. And kids, kids trust because it would be like this. Have you guys ever opened, got a water bottle and you thought, ooh, I am very afraid to drink this water. I mean, I doubt that this is water. It's sealed. It says it's water, but I think it's vinegar, so I'm not going to drink it. It might be a super hot day. I might have just climbed a mountain. I might be getting dehydrated, but I doubt it. I'm not going to drink it because I think it's vinegar. Or maybe this strawberry sauce, you might think, okay, strawberry sauce is my favorite. And your friend bought you this strawberry sauce as a gift, and they knew that this was your favorite to put on your ice cream. And you say, it says strawberry sauce? But I think it might be ketchup. I doubt it, so I'm not going to have it. But this is the thing. No, we don't do that. 
we trust the people who package this, we trust the company, and we open that up and we squirt that on our ice cream and we eat it up like it's the best thing ever. But this is the thing. How often then do we doubt God? We trust this company who packaged strawberry sauce, and yet when God says, I will be with you always, we go through a hard thing and we don't believe it. Or he says, I will heal you, and we don't see it, and so we don't believe it. Or maybe fear comes in our mind, and we believe that. See, in 1 Samuel 17, is a story that you guys probably all know. It's a story of David and Goliath. Now, we can read the story, we can know the story, we can be taught the story, and it takes about five minutes to tell, and sometimes that's all we think there is to a story. But this is the thing. For 40 days, twice a day, the Israelites listened to the enemy taunt them. Goliath would come out morning and night for 40 days. And you know what? Every single adult there believed that giant. He believed that giant. And even though God had said, I will give you victory, but they listened to that enemy. They listened to the enemy. And you guys all know, what did it take for that victory to come? Childlike faith. It took a child to believe that God, if God said, yes, I will be with you, I will give you victory, that he would. And he said, yeah, I don't need this big armor on. God said that he will give me this victory, and he will do it with five stones. Not even a nine-foot giant could convince that child otherwise. And this is why Matthew 18 tells us to have faith like a child, because he believes it. And if we all lived like that, if we could live like God said, that he will be with me always, I will not fear that's what God said, I will believe it. I will not doubt it. If we live like that, when fear comes, and he said, be strong and courageous, that's what scripture says, I will believe that. I will not doubt it. If we lived like that, man, life would be so different. Even this morning as I got up, I was like, I don't need to be nervous. God told me that he would, he would give me this word. He told me that he would speak to you guys. I don't need to fear. He, this is what he said. And if we lived like that, if we lived like faith, like a child, man, things would be so different. And see, I see kids pray like this. You know, on Father's Day, we got in a circle, and you guys were in here having worship, and you guys were in here having a service, and we were in that, in that room in a circle praying for you dads. And one child prayed for their dad that every chain would fall off their dad, that their dad would live in power and victory and freedom. Man, this is what the kids are praying for you guys. It's so incredible. My heart, oh. The thing is, though, kids pray about everything, so you guys don't have any secrets. <laughs> I don't know how many warts I've prayed for, a frozen cat, and my personal favorite, and don't try to guess if this is you or not, but one kid I asked for, and they said, um, I would like to pray that my dad would be more handsome. And I said, uh, I said, do you... You don't think your dad's very handsome? Oh, well, yeah, I do. I just, I think he could be a little bit more handsome. <laughs> you see, there's nothing we can't talk to God about. See, with prayer and worship are super tied together. And as we pray together in the back room, we also worship. We do fun kids songs, but we also worship to the same songs that you guys sing. And... There is nothing that melts my heart like seeing kids in complete worship with their ar arms raised. One of my favorites is this little boy, I think five years old. When we sing worship songs, he's on his knees with his arms raised, eyes closed, just singing. And he is just worshiping God. And this is why I think it says in Psalms 8, you have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up with the course of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. Do you know why I said childlike faith? I think of that child. Because he didn't care what everyone else said. In a humility, he came before God and he was declaring that words and he was giving him his life and he was just worshiping God. That is the power. When we're going through hard things, think of that picture of that five-year-old child. And I had some pictures in the video too of them just worshiping God. And that is where it says it will silence the madness of those who oppose you. And worship is powerful because it's declaring truth. Last, just last Sunday, a four-year-old little girl said to her mom after, 
after church, they were doing their thing. And she said, Mommy, nothing can stand, the pow- stand against the power of our God. And it was just matter of fact. It was simple faith. She believed that. And you know where she learned that? In the song, The Battle Belongs. Because she was declaring it. It sings it over again. And as she's worshiping God, she's declaring that. And she believes it. She believes it. So that goes into our third point, living that faith. We can learn about this stuff. We can learn about this, these, like, this childlike faith. But then we need to live it. God, Matthew 18 tells us to, ha- to live like that, to have that childlike faith. So how do we do that? And first of all, we need to be led by the Spirit. For us to be led... We need to be just like a child is. A child is dependent on their parent. Just like how we need to be dependent on Jesus. Galatians 5.16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. We need to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see, there's a difference between reading your Bible every day and having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting because in... 2 Corinthians 13, 14, I love the wording. It said, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with you all. That's the NIV translation. I've never quite paid attention to that wording before. You see, a child loves to fellowship with you. They love to talk to you. They love to be with you. They love to do things with you. They love that. And you know what? That's the same how we should have that heart with God. We should love to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to talk to him, to be with him, to have that worship music on. And just like that child, we are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. That is a sweet place to start every day. Number two is praying intensely. First Thessalonians 5, 17 talks about with praying without ceasing. Now, obviously, we can't be praying all the time, but... It can be as we're talking. You know, there's one kid who comes in in Hope City Kids, and within about five seconds, they've asked me ten questions and told me everything they did all week, and I am up to date. You know what? That's like what it is. Every single day as we're, we're going through our life, it's, that's what praying without ceasing is. It's talking to Jesus throughout the day. And so that goes in into the third one where it says inviting the Holy Spirit into your day. How often maybe you're really good at having your devotion time, but you read that verse, you close your Bible, and you go on your day. Nah, that's not what it's about. It's inviting the Holy Spirit into your day. Every single, when you're driving, you're praying what's on your heart. When you see people in the store, you're praying for them. When you're saying, God, who needs to be encouraged today? When you have a decision, even what to wear, we're inviting him into our every single day. And then you know you're so aware because you're living in the power of the Spirit. You're aware of the Spirit. You're aware of the battle. So I have two more pictures. We'll show, hopefully it shows up good. So this one, it says, um, beside, the picture is God hitting all of Satan's minions, and he is chaining Satan up, and he has vanished and loses his power. So he perceives that Satan has minions. Maybe that's not biblical, but this is biblical. So that picture is God. He is destroying all the enemy, all the work of the enemy. And you know what? The child says he's chained up. He loses his power. And in my life, I've given my life to Jesus. He doesn't have power because I live in the victory and the power of Jesus. And Jesus has said that we have authority in his word. So when those some things come, this is a picture. Just this, this weekend, I was thinking of how Satan was trying to attack. And I said, no. Nope. I thought of this picture and I said, destroyed. And then look at this, well, they're just completely destroyed. They're kicked out. And I love that. It's such a good, if we're aware of that. There's one more picture. Okay, so we can't really read it too well. But it's saying, this is the power of the Holy Spirit in me to help me with my schoolwork. But this is really whatever it is. If it's your work, if it's whatever you have that day. And you see that little circle in them? They just know the Holy Spirit's there. I'm I'm good. And this is the picture that God gave them. When you go to school this week, maybe they were like really struggling in school. They got it because they have this picture that the Holy Spirit is with them. They know where their victory lies. So fourth, don't grieve the Holy Spirit by pushing him aside, which is Ephesians 4.30. Just as a parent, do you grieve when your parent or when your child won't let you help them? Maybe they're really struggling. Maybe like you could help them so easily, but they refuse. That is how God feels. So easily we can just get busy. 
we can just push him aside. But we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit by pushing him aside. Number five says, believe for miracles and glorify Jesus when they come. Have eyes open to see his fingerprints. Now, I have a question. Do you guys see or notice how much children see based on how much we see? Okay, so I was, like I said, I was at camp. I walked down those, that area so many times. Didn't see much. Uh, five kids go, and they find handfuls of those airsoft color BB balls. They have eyes for them, and it is their treasure. They are pumped. But this is the thing. They have eyes to see. And just like Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. They have eyes to see. So we need to have eyes, just like we saw those airsoft BBs. What if it was like we had eyes to see all of the ways God was working, all the ways he was giving us love notes throughout the day. Maybe our day could have been full of love notes, but we were just too busy or too upset or too angry to even notice. And God said, I had all these blessings for you, but you didn't even see them. And this is why Proverbs tells us, in all your ways, acknowledge me. Have eyes to see. And then when he does these miracles, if they're big or they're small, celebrate them. And share them with others. See, another thing is as we do this, as we're in the word, as we're praying, let our kids see. Let them see it because they are picking up a lot more than we might realize. I'm going to close with, with this story. I was talking to my friend uh, a couple weeks ago. And she said that her seven-year-old daughter had come into her room. And just previously that morning, the younger sister had not been listening, and so she got a consequence that she wasn't going to be able to have treats for two days. Now, the seven-year-old came in, and she was quite bothered. And the mom could tell that she was really wrestling, she was super wrestling, whether she should say what was on her heart or not. And the mom said, what is it? She finally started to speak, and she said, mom... Can I take Josie's consequence? Can I, can I take her consequence? Because that's exactly what Jesus did for me. And you could tell she was counting that cost. Tears filled her eyes because she loved those treats. Those were her favorite treats. But she recognized she had the simple faith. And she believed that if God said that this is what he did for her, she should, she should do the same thing. Even if it meant consequence for her sister. But how many adults I was thinking after I heard this story, man... I don't really know many adults I would say, I'll take it for you. Because that's what Jesus did for me. And it hit me hard because this is why we're called to have this simple like faith. Because God wants to bless us. Because he thinks that we, we are his cherished treasure. He wants us to be close to him. Just like you want your child close to you. See, taking a hold of that simple faith, believing God will do it, and doing exactly what he says, that's where our victory and our power lies. And that's where peace lies. Because when he, say, he says, trust in me and he will give us the peace. And so this is really a call for every person here that we would have childlike faith. But then also, as parents and as anybody who has children, and really, that's everyone here because we have children in this building, that we would foster and grow up uh, children that know this, that they don't have to just know Bible stories, but they know the power of God. They know the authority of God. They know his healing power. They know his love. They know his peace. And when that enemy comes to attack them, they know it's not to mess with them. Now, we are going through the Seeker series, and Seeker has this relationship with the king, and he has power with the king because every single morning he starts going to the king's room king's place and having that time with the king and he puts on the armor of God and you see no one can see that armor of God but he can feel it but you know who can see the armor of God the enemy the enemy can see it because that's where our victory lies that's where our power lies and that's where we're going to get it so as we as parents as people who are called to raise up this generation we need to have that on and we need to teach them but it got it has to start in us first and so I'm just going to pray for us God I thank you so much for every single person here, that you have called them to a personal relationship with you, that you want to give them power. You want them to live with peace and victory. You want them to live 
with incredible joy every single day. And so, God, I pray that they would have this personal relationship with you, that they would fellowship with you, that they would have a hunger and desire and a childlike faith, and that we would also grow up these children to know this, that we would equip them. And, God, I thank you that you have put this in our hearts. And, God, I thank you that you equip us for everything you call us to do. God, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your love. We trust you. And we believe that what you say, you will do. In Jesus' name, amen.